with how much he was withholding, at times it really just felt like Kenneth was hiding something. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie, it's Anya Buile, Steph Anya for short, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Today, I'm going to be talking about everything that we saw unfold between Kenneth and Brittany on season six of Love is Blind. If you're curious, stay tuned. Let me preface this by saying, as always, there are gonna be spoilers. I'm gonna talk about whether or not this couple is together. And please know that anything that I'm saying is based on very highly edited content, highly produced content, meaning that there are people who are making suggestions for what people should talk about, bring up. So anything I say is based on content that is manufactured to serve a certain narrative. So please take what I say with a grain of salt. I'm just going based on what we see on a TV show. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on these things as well. Okay, so typically I start these videos with first impressions, but with Kenneth and Brittany, honestly, I didn't really have any strong first impressions one way or another. We really get to see them most in episode two. And I thought that they were having some good conversations around faith and spirituality, as well as their hopes for the future in terms of the type of family they're wanting to build. They talked about grief. And so I thought these were some great things to be talking about early on when you're dating. I think one thing that I was noticing is that they were talking very big picture. And I see this happen with a lot of my singles that I work with who are hoping to be in a relationship is that they get so sold on the dream when they are meeting someone someone that they talk about how many kids they want to have and where they want to go on vacation and all of these big ticket items. And sometimes those are the things that people don't talk about enough, right? And that ends up being the thing that blows up a relationship. But sometimes we need to talk about the day to day things. We're looking at the forest and ignoring the trees. So what you have to do is find that balance. How do you like to spend your day? What's your favorite thing about your daily routine? How do you see me fitting into that routine? Here's how I see you fitting into my routine. These sort of questions I think can help a lot of the roadblocks we see with Love is Blind when people get to the real world and they're not really able to successfully transport that excitement that they found in the pods to the real world because there weren't really enough of what does your daily life look like conversations we just talked about our hopes and big dreams for our future family <sighs> i was starting to get a little bit concerned about them when Brittany asked him random okay yeah. what ethnicity is your family kind of a roundabout way of asking what is his race, right? Because what if he was adopted or something and you know, his family's background is not the same as his background, but I just thought that was interesting because the funny thing about this show, Love is Blind, is that I feel like the rules of the show are getting so much more limited. I mean, we've seen on this season where people are literally telling people what celebrities they look like. You know, at some point, we're no longer really testing the blind part of this experiment. But I do understand that there is a burden that can come with an interracial relationship because of the expectations of not just family members and friends, but also society as a whole. So asking that question I thought did make sense because she was making assumptions about what his racial background was. But I did think that those kind of conversations sort of compromise the pods a bit. I'm somewhat of a purist. I'm the sort of person that's quite annoying to play games with because I read through the rules and I'm playing by the rules. So I'm one of those people who really likes things to be done in the proper way. So to me, talking about looks at all kind of compromises the experiment, but if the producers are cool with it, if they're not telling them upfront that they can't say those things, they're editing it and adding it to the episode, then clearly they probably don't have a problem with it. But I feel like season one was a bit more pure in terms of of you really didn't know what you were going to get when you had that reveal. So some of these things bother me. When you're asking these questions, is it because it's something that's a major factor for you, right? Like, is that something that Brittany needed to know to mentally prepare for? Or was she trying to prepare Kenneth for it when they got into the real world? Was this something that could present as an issue? If you are fearful of that, it could possibly impact the relationship outside of the pods. 
Something that was happening with Brittany and Kenneth during their dates is that there was a high reliance on compatibility when it came to their spirituality and faith. And I think that is an extremely important thing to be on the same page with their partner about, at least if you guys don't agree religiously to say that's not a deal breaker for me. So I did like that, but I do see, this is something I've personally seen in my work as well as with personal connections is that sometimes we overemphasize that element. We put so much emphasis on religion and faith when we're dating that we really ignore other signs of incompatibility we're just looking for somebody who's God fearing and who we can go to church with and who can basically fit into the archetype that we imagine for what our relationship would look like in that context. And if faith is important to you, obviously it's something that needs to be discussed and needs to be prioritized. But there are things that are also just as if not more relevant when it comes to imagining a life with each other. So one thing that made my ears perk up is the moment where Kenneth asked Brittany if she is interested in having sex prior to marriage or waiting until after they're married. Physical intimacy? Yeah. Are you the wait till I'm officially married? Are you the what I feel comfortable with? Were you? Brittany's response was that she wanted to wait until after they were married. What concerned me was Kenneth's response to that. He just was like, wow, I love that. And I was wondering what would his response have been if she said the opposite? Because to me, if he had said, I'm glad you said that because I've actually been on a celibacy journey and it's something that's really important to me. So I'm glad we're on the same page about that. But he just seemed more like, I'm so glad you said that. I'm so here for it. To me, it seemed as though it checked another box of the Christian girl archetype that he has in his mind. And I'm always worried about people pursuing a fantasy instead of a person. A lot of times he was asking a question, she would answer and he would agree. I wanted to see more of him sharing about what his personal values and morals are and seeing if she's on the same page as well. I couldn't tell how genuine it was. Now, when we get to the reveal, something Brittany said that, I mean, I just thought it was funny and I didn't know what it meant. But when she said, he identifies as a black male, I was like, hmm, that was an interesting language choice that he identifies as a black male. I do recognize that we do all have different identity markers, but I think that just saying that he was black is probably how most people within the community would have communicated that. So I was wondering if there was gonna be a bit of a cultural deficit between them. Maybe she was just trying to be careful with her words. It just seemed like odd phrasing and she said it more than once, which is what made me really think, this is how she believes that you say someone is black. They both seem to be attracted to each other in the reveal. Kenneth had joked that he was short and obviously he wasn't shorter than her. So they both seemed to be attracted. He told her she was beautiful. She said he was handsome. She said she liked the length of his hair. So initial physical attraction seemed to be there according to what they were saying in the reveal. So I don't think that looks are ultimately what contributed to the demise of this relationship. Let's talk about when the couples go to the Dominican Republic. This is where they weren't really really seeming to connect. The Dominican Republic is where we first start seeing a shift in Kenneth's behavior toward Brittany. My thought, I believe the conversation with AD was a major factor for why Kenneth started behaving differently toward Brittany. When all the couples first meet up, we see he's trying to be very chivalrous. She talks about him laying out her shoes. We see him saying he's gonna bring a chair up for her. You want a chair, you good? Um, he's yeah, so attentive. Thank you, baby. He is doing a lot of things to just show the world that he is interested in Britney and most importantly, show Britney that he is considerate and thoughtful toward her. And she seems to be really enjoying that. She talks about it with the girls, but at that meetup, AD asked him, you typically like date like her? Don't, she's a first. And in my opinion, she asked as though it might be a problem. You know, she was very curious, even though AD was very close to getting engaged to someone who was not black as well through the pods. And so he told her, no, he's never done that. And she's like, and I want to be like so 100 with you. Yeah. When y'all get married, 
She's gonna have to raise black children. Yeah. It definitely seemed like she was having a conversation from a space of being concerned, not necessarily celebratory. Based on her experiences, maybe that is something she was very worried about. But from that point forward, we see a major shift in Kenneth's energy toward Brittany. Now, I know that once they get back to Charlotte, we see that he's on his phone, he talks about his close relationship with his phone, but we really start seeing changes in him before he ever even gets his phone back. When they're out on the yacht and and she's trying to tell him, I like affection, I want you to touch me. I don't think that you, you don't think me. overwhelmed? Like, no. no. Like sometimes I'm like, you can touch me more. And he's like, like I really be thinking I'll be smothering you. You don't smother and me. And that's crazy. You, like, do not, like... you do not smother me at all. Like, you know, these are the first moments where Britney's making it clear to him and to us, the audience, that it seems like what she was expecting from him, attraction and affection wise, those expectations are not being met. This is also the point where I started feeling like Kenneth started to be very dismissive towards Britney's concerns. I would say he was even gaslighting her, right? So he's like, oh, if that's your feeling, that's on you. That has nothing to do with me. Like, I feel like that desire and crave between you and I is like the missing piece. For you. Because everything else is aligned. For you. Sometimes that is the case, right? Sometimes people are totally in their heads and their beliefs are not supported by evidence, right? In therapy, we call those cognitive distortions. And often we're trying to help ground our clients so that they can look at evidence before they form an opinion about something. In this situation, Brittany seemed to not having an emotional meltdown. She was talking to him very matter of factly saying, this is how I experience this lack of interaction or these types of interactions. And instead of saying, I'm glad you communicated that to me so I can shift my behavior he basically is telling her mm, well I've never heard that before <laughs> that's not happening I don't know why you would think that I'm doing all of this he's basically telling her that everything she's saying is something that's in her head and that is by definition what gaslighting looks like after a while I did start feeling like maybe it was a manipulative tactic to make himself look better on camera by basically saying like I don't know why you're having a problem with that he didn't want to look like a guy who's not being affectionate my problem with Kenneth from the beginning is it felt like he wanted to present himself as this masculine, head of the household, spiritual leader, super chivalrous, brings the chair, cover you, protect you, all of these kind of things, trying to step into a very certain role that maybe he was not super comfortable with because he seemed to kind of abandon Britney and be really to himself and in solitude, most of the scenes that we saw them in together. So once they finally get back to Charlotte, we all know that there was a third person in this relationship, which was Kenneth's phone. He was constantly on the phone once they got back. He even made sure that we knew in his confessionals that he was so excited to get back to his phone. <sighs> Miss this so much. I miss my device. And he personified it, right? Like this phone is a very important part of him as it is for most of us. Cell phones these days, we use them for everything. We use them like a computer for emails. We use them for money. We use them to contact our friends and texting. We can now see people face to face. Our cell phones have a lot of use, but for such an expedited process, Kenneth was seeming to be paying a lot more attention to the outside world than he was to Brittany. He wasn't unpacking with her. He was not very involved in the decision-making process. Active communication requires you actually engaging with your partner, making eye contact, making gestures. So much of our communication is through body language. So when he's on his phone, he's really disconnecting from her, even if he's responding to what she's saying. If I'm remembering correctly, I think Brittany is the one who said that. I'm the one that like wants to be submissive and be like, baby, Please make the call. And if that's the case, you know, she wants someone who might give her more feedback about things. I also thought that even though Kenneth wanted to portray himself as this super thoughtful person in the conversation with AD, he's like, I'm very like, what you need? Like, yeah. are you okay? Like, can I do something so for she. you? She's the same exact way. I thought that was complicated with certain moments. One that I thought was interesting is when they first move in and she's asking, what should we have for dinner tonight? Me to cook tonight or we want to get food tonight? It's the first night in the crib. You gotta cook. You gotta. Oh, so you gotta you're gonna make me out. cook. Yeah. I can't enjoy the first night. And he basically was just like, yeah. 
Like, that's not thoughtful or considerate. If you're really so attuned, emotionally attuned to her, that would be a moment to say, oh, well, babe, if you're not feeling up to it tonight, I know he just did all this moving and to unpack and everything, let's order in. And it also wasn't like she was saying she wants to go out to eat and he's like, no, 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 let me cook for you. Okay, I can cook, right? He was not as emotionally attuned to her as I was expecting. I'm hoping that that's more of what it was and not willful, I hear what you're saying and I don't care. Because if she's clearly letting you know that she doesn't feel like cooking or anything tonight either, and you're saying just go ahead and cook, well, that to me is just inconsiderate. But I think he really started backpedaling after the conversation with AD. That's the first of many conversations. He said he was gonna have to explain it to his best friend. I'm sure he was thinking about family members he would have to explain it to. And I don't think that he wanted to be viewed as the person who couldn't be with someone because of their race. So he really took the cowardly way out and made it so that Brittany is a person who essentially had to end the relationship because they're having a regular conversation and she's trying to say again, like it feels like we don't have that close bond. It feels like we're not connected he's like so if you if you feel like you don't have a crave for me thank you for telling me that but i don't feel like i'm missing the the crave for you like he's basically trying to put it on her what i'm hearing from you in this moment is the caliber of a man that you are is what i need these things about you are what i need but i don't feel X, Y, and Z for you. This is not going to work. Give me a hug so you know it's no beef. But to be that cavalier with the breakup, the end of an engagement, to me just shows the lack of emotion that was within the relationship. And you know, maybe people might think that he was just hiding his emotion. That's a real possibility. But it doesn't come across well when we see you go into the next room, you're just on the phone with a friend like, Hey, what you on, bro? Yeah, I'm about to get myself here. I'm about to be over there. Brittany even talked about how he would come in late and wake her up, you know, knowing she has to wake up early in the morning. And he's like, Please say goodnight, you know, that's all I wanted. Yeah. It's a little goodnight. I want you to go back to sleep, you know? With all the lights on. He's just being inconsiderate and self focused because if we are to believe what Brittany is saying and what played out on the camera, if there's nothing else happening that would conflict with that narrative, it seems as though he's basically saying, Well, I tried to offer you affection when I wanted to give you some, and you just happened to be asleep and not wanting to wake up. Personally, if I was Brittany, I wouldn't even want to marry someone who doesn't think it's important for me to get sleep and is not affectionate with me when we're both awake. So that to me was very concerning, coming home late. You know, in this process, when you get back to your hometown, yes, you have those people that you need to catch up with, those routines that you're accustomed to. But if you're moving from being single to being married, that does not mean that you can't go out, be with friends. Absolutely does not mean that. But I do think that recognizing how quick this process is, knowing that you only have a matter of weeks before you were to actually marry a person that you just met a matter of days ago, being out late, wasting time, not getting to know this person, person more to me that is not fully committing to the experience and I think that in a way Kenneth cheated Brittany out of the experience because once they were back in Charlotte he was completely emotionally detached he was giving a lot more attention to his phone and I thought Brittany was gracious about it she tried to communicate I don't think that she tried to use accusatory language she was letting him know these behaviors make me feel this way this is what I expected based on what we talked about in the pods and this is not what I'm experiencing and instead of Kenneth saying I have to take accountability for that this is why XYZ is happening or I didn't know you felt that way but I'm glad to know so that I can adjust how I'm behaving and actually adjust he basically just tried to tell her that that's just you that's just how you feel and I'm sorry you feel that way but but that's not true. Sometimes I try to explain to you guys, a lot of these buzzwords we have don't always have to be tied to a specific diagnosis. Often hear words like love bombing and gaslighting being exclusively associated with narcissism. You can do those things and not meet the criteria for narcissistic personality disorder. Not everybody can be diagnosed with an NPD diagnosis just because they may have some narcissistic qualities. And in this case, 
we're not even talking about narcissistic qualities, just some words that have been associated with that diagnosis, right? So I do believe that from what we saw, Kenneth was love bombing Brittany in the beginning, right? With telling her everything that she wanted to hear, trying to be really chivalrous, trying to present himself in a way that really seemed to be very inconsistent with who he is in the real world. Then he wasn't able to keep up the facade when they were in the real world. I don't think he communicated to her. I think that he stonewalled her which means keeping her out of the loop on what's happening for him emotionally. And I think that ultimately he was attempting to gaslight her and tell her that all of her feelings were in her head, but I don't think she believed that. I don't think it was a successful attempt. When Brittany cries at the end, I think she's crying for the missed opportunity to get what she wants, which is a husband, and really falling for someone who portrayed themselves to be something that's really not consistent with who they are. Maybe with a different woman, Kenneth could be the guy that he wants to be but if this is his first time being in an interracial relationship having a conversation with someone should not deter you so much from being able to fight for that relationship that you start completely detaching yourself when you haven't even made it halfway through the process so those are my thoughts on Kenneth and Brittany. Obviously, there may be more that comes up in the reunion, but I'm trying to get these videos out sooner as you all have requested. And since they are no longer together where I am in the show, which right now I'm currently at episode 11, if we get more information, I will do a video on the reunion. But those are my thoughts on them right now. Let me know what's your take on Kenneth and Brittany. I personally think that he just misportrayed himself and he wanted to be that guy, but at the end of the day, he just wasn't that guy. I think she got cheated on in the process. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hello, anyone who's in the live premiere with me thank you so much for chatting with me this like makes my day I love talking with you guys in the instant chat it feels like we're kind of just hanging out and you guys help me form my ideas for the next videos because you guys have such good insight and perspectives on what's happening on screen as well and I love to read it thank you for watching this video I ask that you subscribe to my channel like this video share it with any fellow love is blind fans or people who just love to see therapist reviews all of you who comment and say I don't even watch the show I just watch your videos you guys mean the world to me thank you so so much for the support i appreciate you guys for watching all the way until the end you didn't have to but the fact that you did actually helps me out a lot so thank you thank you thank you